Good evening, everybody. Tonight on Zoom and on a fresh conversation, we had a conversation with Miss Penny Diva. She is the award-winning author of Ratchets Need uh, Ratchets Don't Get No Love, which was um, published in 2015. She was also she is also a life coach. She's a relationship coach. And um, you can get with her at face on our Facebook blog and group entitled Divas Seductive Fantasies. And uh, if that is the genre that you are interested in being a part of, please reach out to Ms. Penny Diva. And in that vein, we are going to do a little romance erotica from Mr. Eric Jerome Dickey as part of our history reading for the Black Read Aloud Day Month and for Black History. Um, we're gonna read an excerpt from Genevieve, his book uh, that he published some years ago, I think back in 2005, which was, uh, yeah, 2005. And he has 26 or 27 uh, different books but because of its um, romance erotica, we chose to read Genevieve tonight. And for those of you who don't know, uh, he was one of the most successful Black authors of the last quarter century. He left us January 3rd, 2021, smack in the middle of the pandemic. And so, you know, we couldn't breathe for a minute because we didn't understand and we were in disbelief. Those of us who were long-term uh, Jerome Dickey fans just didn't understand why that talent had to be taken away from us, but we know that we don't have a decision. But, but what you might not know about him is that he was a software engineer and he worked for an aerospace industry industry. He worked for the aerospace industry for many years until he decided that writing was really his his uh, his his the thing that he wanted to do the most. And he left us with four daughters. Most people don't know that he was so passionate about keeping his personal business, his personal business and about and, and as passionate about his writing. Um, but he will truly, truly, truly be missed. Very influential in my life. And so tonight, I'd like to, su to salute Mr. Eric Jerome Dickey as a person of Black history. And we are going to read from his erotic romance novel, Genevieve. And we're going to read chapter one. She rests on top of my body, naked, wrapped around my leg her head on my chest. Her skin is still hot, soft fire to many organs to count. I'd never been with a woman who came so hard and so often. Her tongue tastes like her secrets. Her lavender aroma lives on my flesh. She stares me. My leg is sticky where her vagina rests on me. My cum drains her and her wetness is all over me. I stroke her breast, fingers pulling at her nipple, and she purrs. Her hand holds my penis with a never-ending longing, holds my flaccidity as if she wishes it were hers to keep. My cellular, my cellular, cellular phone vibrates, hums like her favorite cardinal toy, and dances across the dresser. We both jumped, started away from our private world. Her cellular glows and sings an urban beat, a hip hop ringtone, usher, my confession. We don't reach out to answer. We just hold each other's guilt and we wait for peace to return. We grip our silence as if speaking were the bigger sin. We kiss, touch, he kisses, I kiss her again. And she whispered, we should leave. Let's stay a little longer, baby. They'll look for us. She sucks my tongue, bites me with passion. Please, just, just a little longer. Her tongue finds its way down my chest. Her mouth covers my penis. Oh God, oh God, oh God. 
My fingers stroke her hair, hand encourages her rhythm. She looks up and smiles at me, rubs the rigid part of me against her face, glows as if it had healing powers. Her mouth covers me again, she hums. Sound starved, heat, sweat, heat. The wet sounds arouse me. I moan, let my hand gather her hair into a fist, keep encouraging her motions, her head moving so smoothly. Every nerve comes alive. I wither toward an underserved haven. My flaccidity hardens. I look down at her, she smiles. Proud of the power she has over me inside of this moment. Kisses me and my insanity escalates. She pulls me to where she needs me. Her legs open and I climb on her. The lips of her vagina whisper my name. She takes me inside of her. There's a shift in consciousness as we integrate into sin. She moves and I fall into her anxious rhythm, her undercurrents, her words are soft, her moans are soft, her skin is soft. They all create a spark and that spark becomes a raging fire. I put her ankles around my neck, hold her ass, pull her into me a thousand times. She looks down to witness our connection, then stares into my eyes. My measured strokes go deeper, create madness. She grabs my ass, shudders, tells me she wants me to go faster and deeper. Her arm flails side to side. She yanks the sheets, finds a pillow to cover her mouth to give the softness of her wild sounds, to soften it so no one would hear. Her legs begin to shake. I yank the pillow away so I could see her face, have to watch her. Her eyes close tight. She tremors and grabs her breast, squeezes them so tight. Her legs spread like wings. Under my every stroke, she flies and cries like an eagle. I turn her over, position myself between the bed and the wall, use the wall to give her no power. She can't move, can only take what I give her. She's there, she's coming strong and often. Oh, how she quakes. Oh, how her expressions morph into a beautiful ugliness. The room sounds like an exorcism is in progress. In between my grunts and moans, I call out her name and say some rude and demanding things. She whispers things to arouse me even more, growls, touches herself, then licks her own fingers, touches herself, then feeds me her juices, grabs my ass, tells me to fuck her and fuck her harder. She whines and moans and squeals and tells me how hard I am, how strong I am, how good I'm fucking her, how deep I'm going, demands my steady thrusting to never stop. Goes insane and tells me I can come anywhere I want to, that she will take it in any orifice or drink it like one. I turn her over, take her into the center of the bed, suck her breast while she reaches for my hardness, rushes me back inside her, those hips of hers thrusting upward, taking me with her own measured strokes. I'm not moving, just holding my position, trying not to come, struggling not to go insane. We have breathless kiss kisses, devour and bite each other so, so often. I'm somewhere else, I'm, so I'm somewhere else. Time stops. My senses are focused on her. I lose control of myself. There is no fear, there is no guilt. She loses her breath, tenses up, back arches, and she sings my name in three different octaves. Three different octaves, yeah, that's pretty good, right? <laughs> She comes and she comes and she comes. Then we rest, sweat dripping from our flesh. We fall away from each other as we rest. Minutes pass, 
before I can collect my breath and I move and I can barely turn my head. And then she looks at me. She moans. I think I just had an out of body experience. We look at each other's worn expressions, then we laugh. She said, you ready again? You ready again? I said, you're insatiable. I've never been like this with anybody else. I never, ever, never, ever, I say. She puts her face in my lap, hums, then sings part of a love song that I don't recognize. She whispers, her voice sounding disturbed. God, what have you done to me? I don't answer. I could ask her the same, and my question would go unanswered as well. You make me tingle, her voice reminds me of a song. Make me horny. Think of you and I get wet. You're very intense, the way a lover should be. I find you damn sexy and, ten and tender. Her hand traces my flesh, then I feel her tongue on my skin, licking my sweat. She takes me into her mouth again, does that like she owns me. In her mind, I am hers. She nurtures me. I arch, I ache, I jerk, get the jitters, but my flasticity remains. That doesn't discourage her. Doesn't wane her madness. She's determined to raise the dead. Determined for this not to end. My phone vibrates. Her cellular sings again. Usher still confessing. She's not mine. She's not mine. She's my wife's sister. And this is our affair. That is from Eric, Jerome, Dickey. Please, if you have not read one of his novels, take a moment. There's 26 or 27 seven of them. He is one of the most successful Black authors of the last quarter century. I have just read from Genevieve. Eric Jerome Dickey, we miss you. Thank you for your knowledge. Thank you for your power. And thank you for giving us all the belief that we too could be writers in this world. Good night.